Hi, Becky. Hello. Hi, Melanie. Hi, thanks for making time this morning to talk to us a little bit about the Family Learning Centers. Um, tell me a little bit about you, your full name, your title, and what you do at the Family Learning Centers. Uh, well, my name is Rebecca Burr, but I go by Becky. Um, I am the manager for our Health Sciences Library, as well as our Family Learning Centers. Um, I've been at Valley Wise Health now for almost 20 years in August. And so I find uh, my time here to be exciting and I'm really happy that I'm part of the Valley Wise Health family and what we are able to offer our families and patients. And you came to us 20 years ago. So tell me a little bit about that journey. How did you come to Valley Wise? Um, well, um, I have my master's in library and information science and I moved here um, to look for a job and I knew that when I wanted to go into a library, I wanted to go into something that was a different setting than just a public library. And so I looked at medical centers and I was at another healthcare organization in the Valley for a couple of years before making the transition to Valley Wise Health. Um, I liked the mission at Valley Wise Health and what they were doing both with the residency programs for a teaching hospital, um, as well as what the um, director at that time had um, thoughts of what to do about consumer health and bringing that as um, an idea to Valley Wise Health. Perfect. And tell me a little bit about these family learning centers. How did they start? Sure. Um, so as I just mentioned, that director is looking at consumer health. And so there was a trend um, quite a few years ago within healthcare to bring a health information library to patients. And so the director there had hired me knowing that I had some background in that. At the same time, that was kind of snowballing as there was a pediatrician at Valley Wise Health that was also looking at creating these little um, centers and clinics. Most of the other ones in healthcare had been in inpatient settings, but she was focusing on um, outpatient settings. And so um, from there, we all kind of got together and there was a planning um, grant from Piper um, for us to look at the needs of our families in um, the pediatrics area, especially. And so we had a planning grant for a year and we looked at a number of different aspects. We had focus groups with both providers and um, families. And so from there, we learned that providers were reluctant to identify some of those social service issues because they didn't know where to send families. And families said that if they had a space when they were at the clinics and things like that to be able to get answers to questions, that they would uh, stop and use the resources. And so from um, that planning grant, there were nine recommendations, and one of them was to create a family learning center. And so we opened up our first location on October 17, 2007. And then from there, we were able to tap into First Things First um, funding that was focused on zero to five, and we opened up some additional locations from there and another partner of Thunderbird Charities to help us open up some other locations too. Um, so that's kind of how we evolved uh, over time. I love it. I love hearing the history in a little more depth. Thank you. I didn't even know <laughs> that whole story, so thank you. And um, I've been in the family learning centers. They're colorful. It's vibrant. Um, tell me a little bit more about how you envisioned them looking and feeling and why. Sure. When we first started, we thought families would be really focused on um, health topics, maybe some diagnosis, learning about tests. And while I did have those questions, especially related to nutrition, we realized that families had a lot of other um, social service type questions for us to, happen, uh, to, help us, to help them deal with. We also realized that they were really interested in education for their family. Um, especially their children getting ready for school, um, how they can get them healthy and prepared for kindergarten. And so we really started focusing and honing on those, those families that really wanted to make some of those changes in, um, for their families to help their children succeed. And so we do answer health questions, and so we're able to connect families with different um, uh, reliable health information. We do, do a lot of social service referrals, so when families maybe uh, need help connecting to an agency, we can help model that phone call, help make that call with them so that they can help advocate for themselves and teach them how to advocate for themselves and make sure that they get the services they need. We also do a lot of education classes. Um, so we are, um, provide parenting, we do nutrition, we have um, school readiness, story times, and so we offer a lot of different uh, opportunities there for families to get together with other families, build some social connections. We also focus a lot on early literacy, and so uh, making sure that there's some aspects of reading and literacy in all the classes that we offer. So whether we have a science center there or the Phoenix Zoo partnering with us, that they wrap uh, story times and literacy into all their activities. And then we do eligibility assistance and, and public benefit assistance to help people get connected. We also have utility assistance that we're able to provide too. I love it. That's a huge scope. 
And so when the families first come in, let's say they've never been in a family learning center and they might be a little intimidated, how do you all welcome them or how do you express that it's a safe place and, and help them really kind of drop some of that fear maybe? Again, they're in a, they're in a hospital setting or a healthcare oh. setting, so. I think that the key to some of our success with building relationships with family is finding staff that can build rapport with families to help families feel at ease and are able to build that relationship with them so that over time that they will share. I mean, sometimes families are nervous, and, and so we notice that as they spend more time with us, they might share more needs. Maybe they were a little nervous to stay um, with us, and so we're able to kind of assist them. So it's really about those relationships that we can build um, amongst the staff with that person. And so usually, you know, ask them if we're, we're, we're able to share with them what they, um, what we have to offer. And if they say yes, that's our opening to really go into some detail about what we have. We usually provide them a calendar of classes and some background. And then um, just let them know that we're here if they need us. And so, you know, if they want to reach out to us, you know, if they want us to register, let them know when a class is happening, we, um, you know, we'll follow up and, and have a chat. But it's really about the staff. And all the staff currently um, have uh, master's degrees in different areas, such as social work or education, and they're all bilingual in English and Spanish. I love that. And I know we also have our uh, refugee center, and I know that mm -hmm. you have also that population. Is there anything you want to tell us about that? or? Um, we also work with the refugee, the cultural half navigators. We've offered some special classes just for them um, that um, we'll have all the interpreters there. We've offered CPR. We've also hosted their parent advisory group. And so when they get together with their families, and so we're able to make those connections based upon their need. We usually have a little more planning involved in those activities, but we're able to connect and be able to provide those classes. And so the cultural health navigators are really great partners for us to work with them. I love it. And with COVID, which has come up recently that we're all trying to navigate, um, tell me what you think ValleyWise is doing that's unique and that you think is special in this fight well, to do this together. I mean, besides the amazing healthcare workers who are on the front lines every day, um, I feel like the Family Learning Center has been able to offer some unique opportunities maybe other healthcare organizations haven't been able to have to so some of our patients and families that regularly come. Um, one of the things that we've been doing is providing mailed packets each week of activities for the family to do with their kids. And we have gotten so many wonderful emails and notes and pictures of their families enjoying these activities. Um, families saying they haven't known what to do with their kids, that the kids now look forward to the, having them, the mailbox visit when the packet comes with all their stuff for the week. And so we couple those also with some recorded story times that we're doing, as well as some emails that have some crafts and some other ideas and some resources for families each week. And so I feel like we've been able to help those families do social, building on some of those social connections still too, by attending some of our virtual classes. And so they have been able to see um, people that they had been in person with and being able to see the other kids and, and the, the other kids see the other kids. And so those social connections are really important too. We've held some of our parent advisory groups. So those are our um, families that come together and meet with us regularly to give us feedback. They've still had some meetings with us. And so it's nice to get them together to see each other and be able to build those social connections. I love that you still have that great contact despite all of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking to that, I know we've got our big backpack drive this week for the Family Learning Center. It's going to be a little bit different format, maybe a drive-through, okay. but can you tell me a little bit about your experience with that and the families who come through? Sure. Sure. Every year, um, since almost since the beginning when we started in 2007, we've held a backpack event. We started by a lot of just staff donations that we've grown over um, time, both because of the need of how many centers we have and how many backpacks we need now. But every year, the families start calling us and asking us for backpacks and school supplies to get ready for the next year. Well, while we know that the, this year, we don't know what school necessarily looks like, we know that families still need to have things to do at home. If you've got a kindergartner, you're still going to have to have them work on cutting and learning how to cut paper um, and color, different activities. And so um, we know that they still need those supplies. And so this year, we're, we did a registration process and a drive through pickup, and um, we're seeing how that works and trying to adapt. But um, we're excited to still provide that event with it to our families as we kind of as we have every year since we started. Well, and I'm excited for your coordination on it. It's a huge project. I know we're serving over 2,000 kids this year, and we have yeah. some partners as well. So thank you for staying the course mm -hmm. through this and making this happen. Yep. We're grateful for you doing it for thank us. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and then this is going to be one of my last questions. When you when you think of Valley Wise 
and you think of what we could do with the family learning centers, what are our highest needs? What, what kind of things do we really need to focus on as we navigate through COVID and beyond? I think it's really being there to help support families with different needs that are going to come up. I mean, utilities, I mean, that's going to be a huge um, issue of making sure those are um, paid. I mean, right now when everybody's kind of at a moratorium right now, but when that comes out of it, you know, the families are going to have a real need to have a lot of months of probably utilities paid for. Being able to help them answer questions about, you know, landlord tenant issues, being able to know about rent being able to help with food insecurity, how can I get connected to a food box, being able to help continue to provide those activities for their kids. I mean, it doesn't sound like anytime soon we're really going to be able to go out there and have in-person classes and still, still being able to provide those learning opportunities for their children. Um, it, it seems, from the feedback we've gotten, it seems key for us to be able to still provide. So, and I think there's a whole world of questions. We have no idea what are going to be coming at us. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, we have to be ready to adapt and that's part of our, um, for us too is being ready to make changes and go with the flow and see what our families need. Well, I love that you're ready and with your 20 years experience in this, I'm confident even with our expansion that we're going to continue the great work and I just appreciate your time. I appreciate your heart and your commitment and taking time today. So thank you and thank you for being such a great leader at Valleywise. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love my work here and I love being able to help the families. And so I'm appreciative of the foundation and the Valley Rights and Health Administration too for giving us the support for the learning centers and what our future holds as well.